I had this big moment with my dog. My dog's a mutt, right? So he's always getting into trouble in the house. And when he gets in trouble, he has a certain face. And like, <laughs> I saw myself in my dog. Oh, and I was girl. like, yo, I need a song that like, kind of explains that. Like the theme song of just, he has good intentions, but he just doesn't always do the right thing. That single is about like having good intentions, like wanting to be vulnerable, but then also I'm seeing other people, baby. Like, you know, <laughs> what's the rush? You know, what's the rush? <laughs> What's up, it's your girl Just Nick, and my god DJ Big Reef. We're back for another episode of Plugged In here at S5 Studios. Big shout out to my guy Sunny Salute. So today in the studio with us, we got the very talented singer, songwriter, Grammy Award winning Leon Thomas, baby. Welcome, man. What's good, what's good. Appreciate you for having me, for real. Appreciate you for dropping through the stool. So Absolutely. first of all, me and him, we've been talking about how talented you are just off the record like you're a star bro thank you so much for a real. star and then for you real. be singing singing like the mic is <laughs> on <laughs> like, yeah, and how we try to keep that on you know <laughs> yeah so yeah. for those that's watching that might not be familiar tell us about your musical background like your family scene yeah 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 i come from a tribe of musicians you know my grandfather was an opera singer he sang at the metropolitan opera yeah. um my mom and my stepdad ran a club day band so they were playing like all the really hot live clubs out here from CBGBs to Village Underground, you know. And, um, you know, I really grew up backstage. Uh, so when it came time for me to kind of step into my art, it wasn't a foreign thing. It just really felt like fun, real natural. Yeah. Did they ever bring you on stage while they were performing? Absolutely. You know, my my mom was also in another band called Mama Tongue uh, that I would I would play like percussion with when I was like a, a kid kid, like probably like four or five years old, wow. you know, just like for fun. Um, but but I had good rhythm so I could hang with them. And, and um, you know, when they had their, their band One Nation, I would always come out there and dance at all of their shows. You know what I'm saying? It was just a cool way for me to kind of be involved uh, and, and, and just kind of get comfortable on the stage. Yeah. There, so you yeah. got moves, because I mean, I seen you do the snake on your uh, IG, and I was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, mean? listen, you know, I spent probably like the last decade in a seat just like this making beats for people. I haven't really been out there break yeah. dancing and shit anymore, but um, I'm definitely, definitely trying to get back into the dance studio and catch a vibe for next year. We'll see what happens. For sure. Yeah. Now, you started when you was 10? Yeah, I started at 10 years old out here on Broadway. Um, Lion King was my first Broadway play, and then the Carolina Change, Color Purple, uh, and then started doing TV and film right after that. So yeah. you wasn't scared. Like, do you remember your first show? Oh, yeah, I remember. I mean, it was like, I mean, I think when you're a kid, like, there's not the pressure of, like, rent and taxes. So you're just, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> catching a vibe. You know what I'm saying? You're just going up there, having fun. And you really rehearse for a long time before you get up on the stage. It was, like, two months of rehearsal. Right. So I knew, you know, the lines, the songs, backwards and forwards, and just really had a good time up there. It was fun. You still remember the song? Um, no, not at all. <laughs> was not it, at I all. just can't wait to be king. I just king. can't wait <laughs> to be king. Um, yeah, I want to be a, yeah, yeah, I want to be a mighty king. Like, it's, it's like all this stuff in it. Um, you know, it's, it's like interesting because I feel like for every level of my life, there was like a separate brain for it. Like if you were to ask me like certain plot lines in like Victorious, I couldn't tell you some of them because I feel like my brain only has a capacity for certain things to memorize. Mm. So like I literally kind of replaced that information, almost like a hard drive with, with what I need to know yeah, now, facts. you know. <laughs> Same over here. Yeah. Speaking of Victorious, so you've been acting, yeah. backyard yeah. again. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You've been doing this for a minute. For, for you a know, really long so time. Young, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's been a really long process in the industry and, and uh, you know, being on Nickelodeon was a really cool opportunity for me to get brought into a, a, a crazy audience. I mean, that's, like, a lot of those shows are shown in about, I think, about 80 different countries or something like that. So... I mean, that's a global mission um, from like McDonald's Happy Meals to, you know, video games with Xbox. Like it was it was a real epic moment for me. Um, so I'm like really excited to 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 just even look back at things now and say I'm really grateful for that experience, for the opportunity to be able to grow up with my fans and, yeah. and still be locking in today. Do they ever say that like at your shows like, oh, I used to watch you. on? Oh, for TV. sure. I feel like my fans don't treat me like like a star. They treat me like their cousin. You know what I mean? It's mm. like, what are you doing here, bro? Like, you know, okay. like, they feel like they know me. They feel like they grew up with me. And, and that's a beautiful, a beautiful exchange. Yeah. That's fire. 
Yeah. So look, Nick, you know I love you, right? Yeah. Put Brooklyn in here. Uh, Welcome back. I, 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 I understand. I'm <laughs> Brooklyn in the building. <laughs> now, listen, let me ask you a question. What? Songwriter, producer, yeah. artist, musician. Yes, sir. That part. Musician. Yes, sir. How many instruments you can play? I play five instruments, five. man. And, um, you know, I will say I've been slacking on sax. I haven't been playing saxophone as much. But because I produce a lot, like, I'm always playing parts on all of the songs. Mm -hmm. Like, even on snooze, I was playing the bass line on snooze and some guitar parts on that. You know, it's like... I'm I'm definitely getting able to you know I'm like able to utilize all of my different talents mm. um, you know with my producer hat and then now that I'm doing live shows you know I was playing live drums last I night seen that. it like I seen guitar y'all was having a good time yeah. man like if I can treat the stage like my playground mm. we're doing the right thing you know so so that's the vibe. Let me ask you another question. Favorite musician though. One of my favorite musicians, to be completely honest with you, is Jimi Hendrix. Man. I I'm knew like, it. I'm I like knew a it. Huge, huge. I fan. knew it. Because right. it wasn't just how it wasn't just what he was playing, it's how he was playing it. The finesse, the 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 showmanship, like he just prints as well. Like the way that they would play and like use the guitar to me just really felt like it was like storytelling. Yeah. You know, um yeah, yeah. Jimmy Jimmy's definitely one of my favorites for sure. So before we get into the music, right? The ladies wanna know. <laughs> the ladies wanna Fuck know it. what's going on. What's going on? With the personal life. Now nah, listen, I'm super single right now. Um, Ready to meet super single? Or nah, like? nah, you know what it is? I'm just being really intentional right now. There's like so much going on. I don't want to add like a bunch of new humans into my life. I'm, I'm on just like focusing on my dream and building real relationships if I can with my potential person. So, you know, I'm just keeping it simple. Um, you know, I really want to find like... My, my my like wife essentially in the next like three years four years like like i'm really on that mindset um my grandfather came to the show last night he's like yo man it's time to wrap it up <laughs> to, that, yo it's, 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 where your wife at? like right, what's going yeah. on like, <laughs> the clock is so like he's like come on bro so you know like, like now i'm just really being more intentional like dating with intention and i think that's a good thing you know right. we'll see where that goes so you just dropped the album Wait, hold project, on. Right? You can't just drop that and ask him and not find what? out what what is wifey material to you. Excuse me, oh, it's not shit, about damn. you right now. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I think wifey material to me is a genuine partner. Um, I want to have somebody that I can bounce ideas off of. Um, and it's funny, it, it, it's, it's a bit of a tangent, but I sat down with this like uh, Jewish billionaire, Ido Benzini. And he asked me, yo, he asked me, he was like, yo, so what do you think is the, the perfect trait for your wife? And I was like, well, I just want a girl who's really smart. And he was like, nah, you got to find a girl that's really kind. Watch how mm. she treats homeless people. Watch how she treats waiters, mm. her family. Like, is she, is she kind? And that's something that I kind of implemented into just my life. People who care about, like, humanity just as much as they care about mm. vanity is, like, a, a good vibe. For sure. Yeah. I was just giving to the homeless like yesterday. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is the season, so you know. No, nah, it's the season back. of giving. You know, nah, honestly, back. yo, for Thanksgiving, I'm definitely trying to like put something together if yeah. I can. not I'm like going to be on tour, but uh, my friend actually has something happening in LA. I think I'm going to be in town, so I'm going to try to. I'm gonna try to pop out, you know what I'm saying? Give out some free meals and, nah, you got and to, just you like, yo, gotta, give back, gotta give back, bro. Yo, cause gratitude is the attitude. 100%. And like, I feel like just being thankful for things is beautiful, but but giving, man, mm -hmm. like really giving is is the piece. 100%. Let's get into the uh, project. It dropped in September 2024, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mutt. The, the title. Right. Yeah. Listen, so like, I wrote this album post breakup. So, you know, I was going in and out of situationships, you know, trying to find like That's why you super single now. You feel what I'm saying? In okay. and out of in and out of situationships. And I was like, you know, trying to make this album, trying to promote the last one as well. Um, you know, I really wanted to document my process just trying to figure it out in this dating cycle that we have right now. I mean it's like the the topic of every big podcast. Thanks. I wanted to be like the score to all of the phone mics out there. You heard like for all of those different, you know, Twitter debates, there needs to be a song that's just, you know, really attached to that. And um, I did my best to really like 
lock into some of the, the toxic tendencies, the vulnerable tendencies we have when we're in something and it doesn't work out, like on Answer Your Phone. And I think that's the vibe, you know, like if, if I can be a mirror to society, I'm doing the right thing as a creative. You know? answer, my, answer your the, phone is, is one the of my project. It, it got a lot of moods, right? Like yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like, moods. There's moods. It's yeah. not just all toxic. Bro, you know? it's so, like yeah. really a great, 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 great project. But Thank I just want to get into the first song, Mutt. Like yeah, we like. So I, really, Mutt, I listened like six like, what times, you seven to say, times. I'm lost. Nah, 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 nah. Mutt, break it down. Mutt, yeah, let me break it down to you, right? I think it essentially shows a process of somebody who's a bit guarded because they've had their heart broken a lot, you know? And when, when you're in a new relationship with somebody and you're trying to figure it out, I think for somebody who's a bit guarded, sometimes they might move a little fast, you know? They might, they might just kind of just, you know, flow in there, just, just, just rock with it. And I think for Mutt, to me, the, the verses show like elements of vulnerability and then in the hook, it kind of just explains the why behind it, you know, mm. like like why I might be moving fast, just trying to figure it out, mm. you know, and, and um, it's interesting. Before I wrote that record, I had this big moment with my dog. My dog's a mutt, right? And he's like untrained. So he's always getting into trouble in the house. And when he gets in trouble, he has a certain face. And like <laughs> I saw myself in my dog oh, and I was yeah. like, yo, I need a song that like kind of explains that like the theme song of just he has good intentions but he just doesn't always do the right thing wow. and like that's what mud is about that single is about like having good intentions like wanting to be vulnerable but then also i'm seeing other people baby like you know <laughs> <laughs> what's the rush you know what's the rush yeah enjoy the ride you know what I'm saying? enjoy the ride enjoy you know ride, like yeah. enjoy the ride i'm here for a good time not a but, long time but you can't stop people from like you can't stop people that come into your life and they catch on like real fast like that means you're doing something good. But that's like a lot of relationships now. Right. It's like if we date in and we intimate, we go together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Together. No, no. It's really like that. So, you know, um, it, you know it, it, it's just really trying to navigate that in this mm -hmm. in this climate because there's girls who are like that. And then there's yeah. girls who are on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, kind of moving like the players these days. So it's trying to trying to really pick out who's who's not capping. Essentially. You feel like you can wait for sex? Yeah, yeah, I've How done long? it before. I waited three months before, before, yeah, and like, and, and and then is like, is that the cap? Late. Like three months? No, no, it's not a cap. It's just how long I've waited, you know. And we naturally. What's too long? Um, I don't know. But it you matters. waited three months. Waited to three have months. Sex with the young. Yeah, the lady. Yeah, we dated for like three oh, months. Yeah. We were like cool. Okay. Like I'm just not pressing that side of things. Like right, we could yeah. just we could go out. When it and happens, eat. happens. We go out, eat, catch a vlog, go we'll see a movie, kick it, go home, get home safe. You know what I'm saying? Like Facts. it's just not that yeah. deep, you know. Facts. But but um, yeah. Especially if I'm really trying to get to know somebody, because mm. for some people, like sex has a, a really big meaning and and uh, it can be very heavy. So you just want to make sure you know you're doing the right things. So what you are saying? So if you have sex in like two weeks, you might not really. Be Mess feeling it like right. long term. Uh, nah, 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 not at all, not at all. Cause I mean, I've dated a girl for three years, where first two weeks we just like caught a vibe and it was electric. And in that moment, I knew that was my person in the, wow. on that day, you know. So Fire. we just caught a vibe, and you know, three years went by, but you know, it didn't last forever. But mm -hmm. you know, just to say, there's a spectrum of things that can happen. It, it, I'll just kind of take it case by case. So before we get into the titles of the song, right? Yeah. You produced the whole um, project? I co-produced a lot of it. And I, I will say I worked with some of the best producers in the world mm -hmm. on this. You know, um, shout out to my boy Fax Only on the first track. Um, you know, I work with Jay Pounds. I work with Kendrick a lot. Um, you know, Freaky Rob, D Phelps. Uh, they did the majority of the album with me. My boy Peter who works for Ariana. I mean, there's like a, a mm -hmm. really great list of folks. But I curated this whole thing very meticulously. I wanted to make sure that like my stamp production wise was on it. I mean, a lot of people know me for my production and songwriting. So there's a sound attached to who I am as a human being. And um, that sound had to be involved on every record. Mm, mm. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, the album just, cause you already won a Grammy. But yeah, you feel yeah. like this is a Grammy award with an album? We uh, missed the cutoff oh, dang. For, for, for this year's Grammy. So I got to really like promote this album for like a full year to yeah. even be in that conversation. But to be completely honest with you, like awards are beautiful and it's an amazing moment. And I would be so grateful to have that. But 
the award of the people like yeah. yo tapping yeah. in with the people like 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 seeing it actually affect fans all over the world um that's the part that i'm chasing and i'm building my you know my live business right now my ticketing business and being able to go to europe and sell out yeah. uh go to asia and sell out is a big thing for me and and um we're going to build that brick by brick. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that means that I'm going to have some awards attached to it yeah. because we're selling records and, and we're playing on the radio and, and it's working, let's do it. But, People but, are saying yeah. it's the album of the year, though. Like, are you hearing Man. that? I, I mean, I've seen some uh, you know, Twitter conversations that are really beautiful. Um, and I, I, I just got the blinders on right now. Though. I, like, like, head down, focus. focus. I'm in rehearsal rooms, I'm on stages, I'm in interviews, uh, I'm trying to, you know, really press the mission. Yeah. I just don't want to, you know, smell the flowers too much. I think, um, you know, there's so much work to do. So you really going, you really pushing for, like, your out of really singing, like, I'm, I'm trying to, like, step away from production. I want to show y'all this talent, this, I am an artist, I am a musician. I'm on a mission right You're now. You're on a mission? I'm on a mission. I mean, I spent, I spent about three months working with Ye in, in Italy. And prior oh, yeah. to working with him out there in, in uh, Italy, bro, like I, I watched his documentary and I saw so much of myself in his journey of kind of like mm. fighting out of yeah. the pr producer like yes. title. And um, I'm in that mode right now. You guys are witnessing that moment of me like oh, fighting yeah. for my slot, my space. And um, I can fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. and you so like Dollar, I'm with right? it. Yeah. What's up? You with Ty Dollar? Yeah, I'm signing a Ty Dollar sign. How's and that going? Like, it's how amazing. How did that even come about? Yo, listen. You know, I worked on um, featuring Ty Dollar Sign, the album that he dropped about, like, I want to say, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, while working on that album, we became really close, like, like really good friends. And uh, I was putting together uh, the mixes for my uh, last album, Electric Dusk. Mm -hmm. And I played it for Sean Barron, and he was like, yo, me and Ty were doing this imprint. I was about to drop it independently. Uh, he was like, yo, we're doing this imprint over with Motown. We think you would be an amazing flagship artist. We'll put the entire bag behind you wow. and really focus on you. And, um, you know, for me, I was also seeing at that time Baby Keem and Kendrick mm -hmm. doing their thing. And I was like, damn, there's really no energy like that in R&B, like big bro, little bro, you know, aspects Word. of it. And I was like, well, if we can kind of mirror that same marketing plan, I think the cross-pollinization of fans and even just cosigns can, like, turn into something great. You see how Drake locked in with Lil Wayne. Yep. There's a reason. There, there, there's, like, a, a bridge to people's uh, psyche and how they view you as an artist. And, I mean, you got to know, like, it, it, it was, like, 10-plus years of people just seeing me on television, on Nickelodeon. It takes a great deal of branding and marketing to break that, you know. You're doing a good job. Yeah, Amazing thank you. Job. So you're saying, so right now, right? I'm yeah. going to ask you a, a personal question. Yeah. The space that r in right now. Yeah. Like, how big you think it's, it's getting? Because it's, it's been quiet. Like, like well, three years ago, it was kind of like quiet. It was very dark. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. It's like, here's how I view it. I feel like the R&B divas are killing shit. Like, okay. you, you can't tell me her and SZA yeah. aren't like pop stars by this point, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but even Brent Fias has like reached like world acclaim. And I just wanna, we're kind of hard on R&B, but to be completely honest, like we don't get the same budgets mm -hmm. as a lot of the hip hop acts. And it's more expensive to be an R&B act than it is a hip hop act. Think oh. about it this way, Lil Uzi Vert can go on a stage with lights, fireworks, mm -hmm. and a DJ and, and it. kill it, yeah. right? right? Playboy Cardi, Lights, fireworks, DJ, three hundred thousand dollars to their pocket, mm -hmm. maybe you know a hundred thousand to the crew. For R and B, there's so many different elements when it comes to sound and really maintaining like the live element uh, for 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 some of the divas as dancers. Um, that leverage on a business end can kind of like demean how much money you have to spend mm -hmm. marketing dollars wise after mm -hmm. it comes from like production for live shows and everything mm -hmm. else you know and exactly yeah that. yeah so so i mean not to give it too much of an excuse but i know for a fact that that um r&b is definitely becoming more and more popular and i'm just excited to be a part of like the new class right. the new mm -hmm. gen we just did a show with spotify in uh, dc with Bryson Tiller, Normani, uh, Ombre, my boy Destin Conrad, and like hearing everybody perform live, you know, yeah, we're we're in a good place. Like yeah. everybody's doing their thing, you know. Yeah. My boy Bryson killed it. He he actually performed the the, uh, 
the joint I co-produced for him, Child, too, at the end of the set. Oh, it, that's it, it was crazy. So Your I'm, writing bag is insane. I know artists say every song is their favorite song on a project. Where? What is your number one song on the project? Do you have one? Yeah. You only I mean, can pick one. No, no, no. There's this joint that I played like an insane amount of times after I made it, and it's called Vibes Don't Lie. And it's super just like, it's like an album cut, I guess you could say, but like mm. I am obsessed with it. Um, it was just, for me, when you go into the studio with a mission and then you walk out of there with the product you wanted, that was one of those songs for me, like where I had the vision and I walked out of there with something tangible. And uh, you know, for me, it's just it, it's just a special record. I like it a lot. Well, I can agree with Nick. I think our favorite song on Mike. What's up? Answer the phone. Answer the phone. Answer the phone. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, that was a song that was actually done, kind of like uh, a song we would be recorded in the '60s. Diane Warren. I went to her studio. It's this really fly studio in uh, Hollywood off of Coanga. Walk up there. It's just me and her in the room and her engineer. She's like, all right, I have a song to play you. She picks up a guitar, sings a joint. Then she says, no, actually, I want you to hear it on piano. Goes to piano wow. and sings a song down. She has charts. And I'm like, man, this is really beautiful. We took the song and then I recorded it. And then I had my boy Freaky Rob come in, my boy Peter play strings and keys on it. And we really turned that whole thing into a movie. It was like... And, an expensive way to make a record, but I was really <laughs> excited about it, you know? Yeah, Diane Warren is that chick. That like, I mean, over 20 to 30 number one yeah. records written by her solely. It's, Period. It's, it's dope. Period. Yeah. Is there anybody that you work with that you was just, like, totally amazed at? Like, I can't believe I'm in the studio or hanging out with this person. Man, I mean, it's actually a record that didn't make it to the album, but uh, it was a song that I did with Ty and ASAP Rocky, being from New York. Like, I was really hyped to work with ASAP, you know? Yeah. Um, it didn't make it because he, I think he has other plans for the song, but uh, I was definitely kind of a fan of now. I'm not going to lie. I was playing it cool, though. I played it real chill, but like, <laughs> and so I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I mean, with Rocky, that was fire. <laughs> That's lit. That's lit. Yeah. And you got visuals out for the project. Yeah. Um, are you gonna be dropping any more? Yeah, I have I have some big plans for Feelings on Silent. Um yes. the song with me and Wale. Um, you know it's it's interesting with budgets for me, you know, as an artist I have to recoup all of this stuff, right? So I'm just really playing off of the data, like what are people really responding to? Right. What's picking up steam? And then going back and shooting full length music videos, I think is like a smarter way on a business angle to not just blow your budget and then mm -hmm. like, you know, like hope people like it or view it on YouTube, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, that's kind of how I'm playing everything. And top of the year, you know, like when the budget's open up again, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what's good. You could, you could tell he's matured and he's grew up in yeah. the industry just from how you talking now at such right. a young age. Like Word. a lot of cats your age kind of just now getting in, they don't know the ins and outs, mm -hmm. but you can yeah. tell you like kind of learned. I grew up in this thing. And I mean, I've been on the other side of the industry too, on the production yeah. and songwriting. So I've seen artists like think shit sweet and blow through a whole budget and be asking questions like, why am I shelved? Because you didn't recoup, bro. Like, you didn't, your return of investment, buddy. Right, <laughs> like, right, you know, right. Can we get that money back real quick? <laughs> like, and I mean, like, I, I think artists don't realize that you know, it's a loan, you know? That part. It's not free money, it right? It ain't free money, buddy. Right. Yeah. You gotta pay your back. So you touring right now? Yeah. Right? How yeah. many cities you been to so far? I've been to four, yeah. Sold out. Sold out, man. Sold How many out. more cities you gotta go? I think I got... Uh, oh, which city is next? Like, oh, Boston. Like, Boston. nine more, though, yeah. So what you doing? Like, uh, um, East Coast? Well, East Coast, uh, for sure. And then uh, I'm going to go out there in, in Texas, do my thing, and then we're going to end up in um, in uh, L.A. again, you know, mm -hmm. San Francisco, yeah. Dude, you got fans out of the country, too, so... Maybe yeah. Later. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to you know hopping on a plane and figuring that out. But once again, that's very expensive. So you know we're gonna try to make this <laughs> shake. I will say I I am about my paper. Like I'm just trying <laughs> to like make it work. Like I just want to get into the green. And it, sometimes it's an investment in yourself as an artist. Yeah. But I think it's very important to like be profit focused. Like how can we how can we do this, build organically, but then also squeeze profit out of every opportunity mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. are you doing stuff outside of the singing and the acting that's generated more income too um right now no but um you know i did 
just invested my first investment property. Okay. Um, and I've been living Romantic in it. Right I've been here. living in it for some time, but you know, I'm I'm looking forward to having enough like just income to continue building out the back house, doing some more stuff to the kitchen, so then I can put a family in there. He's getting ready for the family, y'all. Re up and then re up, re up. You know, do another crib, same thing in L. A. And then maybe find like a property like in another state too. Like as I've been touring, I'm seeing like underdeveloped areas that maybe I can even get an apartment building in. Mm -hmm. um, that yeah, would be wow. really cool. Yeah, like right. yeah, like a multifamily unit. Mm -hmm. That's like monthly is dope. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. mad at it. Yeah. Mutt is out now. So listen, this is plugged in. Um, and we like to plug in a little bit and, and yeah. see if the artist feels like they want to sing or play a little something, something. So Word. like for your fans, you want to sing a little something? I mean, shit. Maybe answer yeah. your phone or uh. We could. Yeah, we could catch a while. <laughs> you guys did have that guitar over there, right? Let me see if I, I can tune it up. Tune, yeah, I mean, we can take a little second, tune it up. Said yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, I'm losing all of my my will. Might as well right out. My will, damn, I'm losing all of my, my will. Uh. I said, damn, I'm losing all of my, my will. Oh, my, my will, damn, I'm losing all of my, my will. Uh. I said, I'm gonna keep it short, no, I won't take too long. Mm. My lawyer's kind of shitty, so I'm gonna write it in a song. I said, if I owe you bread, baby, you gon' get that shit back. Yeah. Yeah. Just liquidate my assets and take care of all of that. Said, whoa, yeah. please no cat fights at my funeral. If you think you the only one, there's another you. Uh, I guess a sad song would be suitable. But if you could play Wu Tang, that would be beautiful. Please don't have me dressed up in no corny shit Stick to the aesthetic and please save my genetics So maybe in the future there could be another me That's not so damn apathetic Oh, damn I'm losing all of my, my will Might as well ride out my will Damn I'm losing all of my, my will I said, damn, I'm losing all of my, my will. Might as well ride out my will. Damn, I'm losing all of my, my will. Oh, 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 oh. Crazy. <laughs> it's the chops for Horses me. Horse and shit, but yeah. <laughs> it's the runs for me, y'all. Uh, officially plugged in, the one and only Leon Thomas. What do you want to say to your fans for we let you Listen, know? I appreciate each and every one of y'all that have been streaming my music, tweeting about it, telling a friend, buying merch, coming to the shows. We're building a community right now, and I'm definitely here to stay. More music coming, and uh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Love. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks Peace. for watching.